Good morning and welcome. My name is Reverend Gilbert Ham Jr. and I'm one of the associate ministers here at Ebenezer Baptist Church. And once again, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our online worship experience. I'm so excited for you today. We get the chance to welcome our pastor back from vacation, and I know he's ready to share a powerful word with you this morning. So you want to go ahead and grab a friend, grab a co-worker, grab a family member, and let them know Ebenezer is about to get started. Well, you know what time it is. Let's go.
Welcome back. I truly hope that you were blessed and that you were encouraged by that selection from our choir. And I've come back to just invite you to uh, sow a seed into the ministry to partner with us. If this ministry is being a blessing to you, then we invite you to sow into the ministry. This is certainly good ground and you will certainly receive a harvest. On the screen, you can see how you can partner with us. Once again, we want to thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you for those who have already uh, partnered with us. We are so grateful for your support. We're so grateful for your prayers and continue to keep us in prayer. God bless.
Minister Joyce Hale, to our chairman, Deacon Marion Brown in his absence, Chairman Trustee John McQueen, to our First Lady, Mrs. Viola Ham, Mrs. Marlo Ham, and to the Ebenezer Baptist Church family. To those of you who can, would you please stand for the reading of God's Word. Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse 17. Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse 17. If you have it, say amen. And he went, and when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. Verse 22, and he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved for he had great possessions. You may be seated. Lord, seal this message in our hearts. I ask it in your name. Amen. For this uh, preaching, I would like to preach on this subject What's your lack? What's your lack? What's your one thing? What's your lack? What's your one thing? The dialogue of our text occurs as Jesus was traveling with his disciples toward Jerusalem. Once again, the dialogue of our text occurs as Jesus was traveling with his disciples toward Jerusalem. And along the way, Jesus is approached by a rich young ruler who earnestly besought Jesus, wanting to know what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. Now, we know he was young, because the parallel account of this encounter 
recorded for us in the gospel according to Matthew chapter 19 and verses 16 through 22 states that he was young. Verse 20 and verse 22. And we know he was a ruler because the parallel account of this encounter recorded for us in Luke chapter 18 and verses 18 through 23 refers to him as a ruler. And we know that he was rich because Luke chapter 18 and verse 23 says that he was rich. And in fact, it says he was very rich. And in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 22, as well as in the 22nd verse of our text of Mark chapter 10, it is written he had great possessions. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 23 and Mark chapter 10 and verse 22, which is how we understand he was a rich young ruler. Now within our text, he is a rich young ruler who shows tremendous reverence to Jesus and genuine enthusiasm for life beyond this life as he runs to Jesus and kneels down before Jesus and addresses Jesus as good master or good teacher before asking Jesus, what shall I do? that I may inherit eternal life. What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now, without a doubt, no other question is more important than the question of eternal life. And without a doubt, no other question commands the attention and affection of heaven as does an inquiry regarding eternal life. Such a question of inquiry excites heaven because eternal life is God's desire for our lives. And such a question or inquiry incites heaven for the simple reason that God gave his son to make eternal life possible for us. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John chapter 3 and verse 16. And for understanding the phrase everlasting life is synonym eternal life. And for understanding, when we talk about everlasting life or eternal life, we are talking about perpetual life, which is a life that goes on and on and on without end. So we understand, church, eternal life is not something that starts after we die but eternal life is something that begins the very moment 
we confess faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and Savior of the world. And so we understand once eternal life begins, it continues without interruption in exclusive of death. Which is why Jesus says in John chapter 11 and verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me, shall never die, the New King James Version. Listen. Somebody say listen. Listen. Eternal life is a gift of God and not something that we can earn. We cannot purpose, purchase eternal life with wealth. We obtain eternal life, we, we, nor can we obtain, excuse me, eternal life through good works. Eternal life comes to those who believe in Jesus Christ. It is only through uh, the establishment of a relationship with Jesus through faith in Jesus that such life can be acquired. Again, eternal life Eternal life is acquired without work or cost. Eternal life is a part of the benefits package of salvation. And so we understand that souls be saved is the will of God for mankind. The Bible, the Bible is clear. Mm -hmm, the Bible is clear. God is long suffering toward us. Listen now, not willing that any should perish, but that all, but that all should come to repentance. Second Peter, Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, the New King James Version. The Bible is clear, my brothers and sisters. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John chapter 3 and verse 17, the New King James Version. Now, the question of eternal life is a good question to be asked. And the quest for eternal life is a good quest to pursue. But in pursuing eternal life it will always lead to Jesus who is the way the truth and the life John chapter 14 and verse 6 and in pursuing eternal life it will always require 
the sacrifice of something in this life that blocks us from giving ourselves wholeheartedly to the kingdom of God. If you don't mind, ask somebody, what's your lack? What's your one thing? Now after deliberating the thought of who is good and after making it clear that only God is good, Jesus puts the spotlight of the conversation on a portion of the Ten Commandments and in particular on the portion of the commandments that deal with human to human interactions as it relates to human to human respect for one another listen to what Jesus says do not commit adultery do not kill or do not murder do not steal do not bear false witness do not defraud honor your father and your mother and Jesus does so as a way of providing a test by which the young man could examine himself and Jesus does so as a means of leading the conversation into a request that would challenge an area in the young man's life that will expose the one thing within his life that stood in the way of total commitment to God and thus the one thing that will stand in the way of him receiving the very thing that he sought from Jesus eternal life no doubt this young man was a good man or good young man who merited high marks on the moral report card however Jesus would proposition him with a course of action that would greatly benefit others but would prove too much for him to do do me a favor and ask somebody what's your lack what's your one thing now having told Jesus that he had kept the very commandments that Jesus quoted do not commit adultery do not murder do not steal do not bear false witness do not defraud and honor your father and your mother Jesus then tells him while looking at him with love for him go your way sell whatever you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me Jesus tells him go your way sell all that you have and give all of the proceeds from that and receive what you sell to the poor give it and you will have treasure or security and supply 
in heaven and come take up the cross and come make a sacrifice for the kingdom and follow me and to this the Bible says but he was sad at this word or saying and went away sorrowful for he had great possessions but he was sad at this word or sad at this saying and went away sorrowful for he had great possessions in other words face with the choice of have great possessions faced with the choice of relinquishing what he had in order to gain what he wanted listen now he chose his wealth rather than Christ What Jesus asked of him to do, he was unwilling to do simply because, as with some of us, what he possessed had possession of him. In other words, as with some of us, his attachment to the things of this world hindered him from surrender and sacrifice. In other words, as with some of us, his love of wealth blocked him from loving God as God requires with his whole heart, mind, soul, and strength and loving his neighbor as himself. One more time, do me a favor and ask somebody, what's your lack? What's your one thing? What's in your life that is keeping you from total commitment to God what's in your life that is preventing you from giving yourself fully to the kingdom of God what's in the way what's the barrier what's the hold up why the hesitation or reservation? Why the lack of a commitment? Why the lack of devotion? Why the lack of trust? Why the lack of sacrifice? Now we know the lack with the rich young ruler was his love of money and attachment to things. Once again, now we know the lack with the rich young ruler was his love of money and attachment to things. But but the question is, what's your lack? What's your one thing? We know that the rich young ruler love of money and attachment to things 
kept him from obtaining eternal life. But the question for you is, what's keeping you? Oh Lord, what's keeping you from having a relationship with God? Oh Lord, what's keeping you from completely loving God? Oh Lord, what's keeping you from total surrendering to God? Oh Lord, what's keeping you from saying yes to the Lord? Great God Almighty, from saying yes to His will. Oh Lord, from saying yes to His way. Oh Lord, from saying yes to His word. Oh Lord, from saying yes to his son, good God Almighty, what's keeping you from having a prayer life? Oh Lord, what's keeping you from reading the Bible? Oh Lord, what's keeping you from coming to church? Oh Lord, and don't say COVID-19 because you go everywhere else. Oh Lord, what's keeping you from putting your trust in God? Good God Almighty, what's keeping you from trusting God with your life? Oh Lord, what's keeping you from trusting God with your resources? Good God Almighty, what's keeping you from trusting God to sustain you? Do I have any help in here? What's keeping you from trusting God to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory? Oh, Lord, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Do I have any worshipers in here? But what's keeping you from doing so? Do me a favor and ask somebody what's your lack? Oh Lord, what's your one thing? Good God Almighty, may I ask what's keeping you from loving God? Yeah, what's keeping you from trusting God what's keeping you from depending on God what's keeping you from surrendering to God is it the world oh Lord is it this life oh Lord is it people is it things may I ask you what's in the way do I have any help in here may I ask you what's the hold up may I ask you why the hesitation may I ask you why the reservation I hear Jesus say no man can serve two masters for he will hate the one and love the other and hold to the one and despise the other do me a favor and tell somebody pick a side do me a favor and tell somebody Somebody make a choice. Do me a favor and tell somebody get off the fence. Oh Lord, do me a favor and tell somebody come on over to the Lord's side. And when you come over, don't look back. No, no. When you come over, never go back. And when you come over, 
stay there stay over do I have any help in here and when you come over don't worry about a thing because everything will be alright I hear the song I just say be not dismayed whatever be tired God will take care of you beneath his wings a love abide do I have any help in here God will take care of you I hear the Bible say delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart I'm not trying to pry but may I ask you what's what has your heart I'm not trying to pry but may I ask where is your heart I'm not trying to pry but may I ask you what's keeping you from serving God I'm not trying to pry but may I ask you what's standing in the way between you and God oh Lord I hear somebody say I hear I hear the songwriter say I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back do I have any help in here I hear the songwriter say the world behind me the cross before me no turning back no turning back do me do me a favor and tell somebody stick with Jesus oh Lord do me a favor and tell somebody it's the right choice do I have any worshipers in here do me a favor and tell somebody don't walk away no no do me a favor and tell somebody don't miss out on eternal life don't miss it for the luxuries of this world don't miss it for the things that won't last don't miss it for people who don't believe don't miss it for the pleasure of a moment whatever the lack give it up oh lord whatever the lack let it go do I have any help in here whatever the lack turn it loose do I have any help in here whatever the lack surrender all it and follow Jesus let it be all to Jesus I surrender let it be all to him I freely give let it be I will ever love and trust him let it be in his presence daily live I surrender oh Lord do I have anybody here that is willing to surrender do you do you do you mean to surrender yourself to the Lord tell somebody I'm already I'm already surrendered to Jesus do I have any help in here and let me tell you let me tell you let me ask you isn't Jesus all right isn't Jesus all right? Do you know he's all right? All right. All right. He will fight your battles. Do I have any help in here? He will make a way out of no way. He will put food on your table. He will put shoes on your feet. He will put a roof over your head. Do I have any help in here? I don't know about you, but I surrendered to Jesus a long time ago. Yes, I did. I came to him. I came to him. I was weary, worn, and sad. But you know what, Ebenezer? I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. Do I have any glad people in here? Do I have any glad people in here? Yeah! Oh, Lord. 
Yeah! Yeah! He's all right! Hallelujah. What's your lack? What's your lack? What's your thing? What's keeping you? What's keeping you from serving God? What's keeping you from completely trusting in God? Don't be like the rich young ruler.
You told us that we could come to the throne of grace where we can obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. And oh, how we thank you for your everlasting mercy. And oh, how we thank you for your amazing grace. You've been so good to us. So good to us. You have taken good care of us in spite of what we have been facing. You have taken good care of us. You have given us strength for the battle. And we say thank you. And the beautiful thing, Father, is that our eyes is only upon you because you are the only one that can help us. Because there are some situations, Lord, that we know that man can't get us out of. But you can. You can because there's nothing too hard for you. Nothing beyond your control. Nothing beyond your ability. Nothing beyond your power. Everything is possible with you. Now, Lord, look. Look right now on your people. They have come. I don't know why they're here. I don't know their needs. But oh, you know. Oh, in Jesus' name, meet every need, meet every need, in Jesus' name. In fact, Lord, do the impossible, do the impossible, because you're able to heal cancer. A living witness of that. You're able to heal sugar diabetes. You're able to heal female problems. Yes, you're able. You're able to heal brositis. You're able to Restore new lungs, restore new hearts, restore new kidneys. You are able to restore and multiply our red and blood cells. You're just able. Look on this altar, Lord. Look on each one. And I pray, Father, that you will send them away rejoicing. Rejoicing in the God of their salvation. Why should they rejoice? Because their prayer, their prayer has been heard. And you is getting ready to send the answer. Oh, thank God. Thank you, Father, that the answer is on the way. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for doing the impossible. We're not going to give up on you. We're not going to turn our backs on you. You've been too good. But we're going to wait on your time. We're going to wait because you have perfect time to do whatever you want to do. Yes, we don't know how long the night is going to be, but we know that joy is coming in the morning. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you.
like yet. That's all we know how to say right now. Thank you. We can't put words together. All we know is to say thank you. Thank you for bringing us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for healing us. Thank you, Father. Before I close this prayer, we know this one thing, what you did for us back then, you're able to do it for us right now. You fought our battles in the past, you're able to fight our battles right now. Thank you for answering prayer. And Father, I pray. I pray that that someone will walk away from this place with the healing that they need. from all of your destructions and my word will not return to me void but it will prosper wherever I send it and we ask the Lord in Jesus name in that name that's above every name in his name I pray now, if you don't mind, turn around and give somebody a hug and say, tell your neighbor, minister to him, say, it's done. Come on, tell him it's done in Jesus' name. You may not see it now, but it's done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Welcome back. I truly hope that you were blessed and that you were encouraged by that message from my pastor. And if you were blessed and encouraged, we just simply ask that you just leave us a comment and let us know how the Word of God has impacted your life. If you've never accepted Christ as your personal Savior and you would like to do so, I'd like to go ahead and share, say this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you confessing that I am a sinner and I recognize my need for salvation. I believe that you went to the cross of Calvary and you died for my sins. I'm accepting your free gift and inviting you to come into my heart. 
please save me. Ladies and gentlemen, if you said that prayer sincerely, then the Bible lets us know that you're saved. For Acts 16.31 says, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. The next step is to get connected to a Bible-believing and Bible-preaching church so that you can grow in your faith. We invite you to stay connected with us. We're on Facebook at ABC Wilmington. And why don't you go ahead and click that follow button. We're also on YouTube at Ebenezer Baptist Church of Wilmington, Delaware. And go ahead and click that subscribe button as well as the notification button so that you're notified each time we upload new content. You can also follow us by hashtag EBC Wilmington. If you're ever in the area, we invite you to stop by and worship with us. We're at 2200 North Claymine Street here in Wilmington, Delaware. And we've taken every precaution to make sure that your worship experience is a safe experience. So on behalf of Pastor Ham, the official staff of Ebenezer Baptist Church, we want to say thank you. And until next time, take care, stay safe, and God bless.